So in this video, I wanna talk about viral life cycles, and I'm gonna focus on viruses that have these lipid envelopes. So the first step is the virus with its receptors bind onto these cellular receptors. So that's the first step. Then once the virus binds, it triggers a cascade of events that allows the membranes to fuse. So now the membranes fuse, and now the virus can enter inside of the cell. The next step is this capsid protein gets dissolved. And once the capsid gets dissolved, now the viral genome has successfully entered inside of the cell. But it's important to realize that there are lots of different types of viral genomes. So I showed a double-stranded DNA viral genome. However, we can also have single-stranded positive sense DNA genomes, or we could have double-stranded RNA genomes, and etc. So there are lots of different types of viral genomes. And you might wonder, what's the difference between a positive sense and negative sense strand? Well, we know our, our human genome is a double-stranded DNA genome. So one strand is positive sense, and the other strand is negative sense. And these positive sense strands are always complementary to the negative sense strand. So if the positive sense has an A, the negative sense strand will have a complementary T. If the positive sense has a C, the negative sense strand will have a G, and etc. So therefore, we see they're complementary of one another, so therefore, they would have different sequences. They would have different nucleotide sequences. If we have this codon here, the negative sense strand will have this codon. So we have different nucleotide sequences, so therefore, we have different codons. So if we have different codons, then if these strands got translated, they would create different sequences of amino acids. And it's important to realize that only in this positive sense strand does it have the right codon sequence to create the correct amino acid sequence to create a fully functioning protein. If we took this negative sense strand and used those codons to create an amino acid sequence, it would fold into a useless protein. And I know this is DNA, so it would first have to turn into RNA to have the codons to be translated, but the point is, it's this positive sense strand that has the right codon sequence to create a functioning protein. And also it's important to realize that we need a negative sense strand as a template to create a positive sense strand. And then we can use that positive sense strand as a template to create a negative sense strand. And you'll see that over and over again in this video. So it doesn't matter what type of viral genome you have, once that viral genome enters inside of the cell, it has two major priorities. First, it wants to create viral proteins. So first it wants to create viral proteins. And the way it does this is it takes the information in the viral genome to create this mRNA. And mRNA will always be single-stranded positive sense RNA. So that's the first step. We use the viral genome, the information in the viral genome to create mRNA, which can now be translated into viral proteins. The second priority is to create copies of the viral genome. So again, if we had a double-stranded DNA viral genome, we would have to create double-stranded DNA viral genome. So we would, the, the second priority is to create identical copies of the original viral genome. So it doesn't matter what type of viral genome you have, as soon as the viral genome enters inside of the cell, it has the same two priorities. So and then the reason why we have these two priorities is we need to create viral proteins and we need to create copies of the viral genome because now we'll have everything we need to create new baby virions because we know these virions are made out of viral proteins and, and the genome. So now we create these new baby viral virions which can now bud out of the cell and infect new cells. And we see in this life cycle, there was a step where we took DNA and used it to create more DNA. So this would be catalyzed by DNA-dependent DNA polymerase because it's dependent on DNA in order to polymerize new DNA. And we also have a step where we take DNA and use it to create RNA. So this would be catalyzed by DNA-dependent RNA polymerase because it's dependent on DNA in order to polymerize RNA. And again, we know humans, we have these DDPs and these DR, DDRPs. Because humans, in our human life cycle, we have these similar steps. So therefore, this virus is lucky. It can use our, our human polymerases. However, there are other viruses that, have, that turn RNA into RNA or, or they turn RNA into DNA. So therefore, those viruses need to encode for these RDRPs and these RDDPs. And we'll talk about that later.
But now let's do an example. So here's a little key just to keep track of during the video. But so let's say we have a single stranded positive sense DNA viral genome. So that virus enters inside of the cell. So again, once it enters inside of the cell, we know it has these two priorities. One, to create viral proteins, and two, to create identical copies of the original viral genome. So it doesn't matter what type of virus we have, it always has those same two priorities. So how does it do this? Well, the first step is with the single-stranded positive sense DNA viral genome. The first step is to use this positive sense strand as a template to add a negative sense strand. And now once we've added that negative sense strand, we could use that negative sense strand as a template to create this mRNA, which we know is single-stranded positive sense RNA. So now we create this mRNA. So now that we have this viral mRNA, essentially the cell's ribosomes will, will see that mRNA and they'll use that mRNA to translate it into viral proteins. Because our cell ribosomes don't know the difference between this viral mRNA versus cellular human mRNA. So therefore, these ribosomes will simply see mRNA and they'll translate it to create viral proteins. So that's first priority, to create viral proteins. The second priority is to create copies of the original viral genome. So the way we do that is we use this negative sense strand as a template to create these, these positive sense strands. So now we've done it. Now we've created viral proteins and we've created identical copies of the original viral genome. So now we have everything we need to create new baby virions, which can now bud out and infect new cells. So now let's do another example. Let's say we have a single-stranded negative sense viral genome. Again, once it enters inside of the cell, it has these two priorities. So the way it does this is, again, it adds a positive sense complementary strand and now what it can do is it can use the negative sense strand as a template to create this mRNA, which can be translated into viral proteins. And it can also use this positive sense strand as a template to create these single-stranded uh, DNA strands. So, so, and again, remember, this was the original type of viral genome. So now we've done it. Now we've created viral proteins, and now we've created lots of copies of the original viral genome. So now we have everything we need to create new virions, which can bud out and infect new cells. So now let's do another example. Let's say this virus happens to have a double-stranded RNA viral genome. Once it enters inside of the cell, again, it has these two major priorities. So the way it does this is the first step is it uses this, this negative sense strand as a template to create this positive sense RNA strand. So therefore, this would require an RDRP because it's dependent on RNA in order to polymerize new RNA. However, where is it going to get this RDRP? Because we know this human cell doesn't have any RDRP laying around. Why would it have? Well, humans don't need RDRPs. In the human cells, we never take RNA and use it to create more RNA. So therefore, human cells don't have these RDRPs. So once this viral genome enters inside of the cell, how does it do this first step? Well, it must bring with it some of these, uh, these RDRPs. So this virus has these RDRPs prepackaged. So now once the viral genome enters inside of the cell, it can initiate this first step of the life cycle and create this, this mRNA. And now that we have this mRNA, because remember, mRNA is just positive sense single-stranded RNA. So now that we create this mRNA, we can create viral proteins. And also what we can do is we can use this, this again, positive sense single-stranded RNA as a template to create negative sense RNA strands. And now this negative sense RNA can be as a template to add positive sense strands. And now we've created copies of the original viral genome. So now that we've created viral proteins and we've created identical copies of the original viral genome, now we have everything we need in order to create new virions. And again, remember, these new virions must package with them these RDRPs, because then when it buds out, it has these RDRPs ready, so then when it infects a new cell, it can initiate the first step of the life cycle and get things started. So let's do another example. So let's say this virus happens to have a single-stranded negative sense RNA genome. Well, once it enters again, the first step is to create these single-stranded positive sense strands of RNA. And again, in order to do this, it needs to bring with it some RDRP because it's dependent on RNA in order to polymerize more RNA. Therefore, it's an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. 
And again, it must bring with it some of this RDRP. It must have this RDRP prepackaged with it, so therefore when it enters the cell, it can initiate the life cycle. But now that we create this positive sense RNA, which again is simply mRNA, it can be translated to create viral proteins. And it can also use this positive sense single-stranded RNA as a template to create negative sense single-stranded RNA, which again was the original type of the viral genome. So now we have everything we need. Now we've created viral proteins and now we've created identical copies of the original viral genome. So now we have everything we need in order to create new virions, which again must package with them these RDRPs. So then when it affects a new cell, it can initiate the life cycle because it has these RDRPs to initiate the life cycle. So now let's do another example. Let's say this virus happens to have a single stranded positive sense RNA genome. Well, once this genome enters inside of the cell, notice it's already in the form of our mRNA. So it can, it can immediately start the life cycle. It can immediately, it's this genome is in the form of mRNA, which can immediately get translated to create viral proteins and to create all the RDRP it needs to initiate the, the subsequent steps. And again, so next what's gonna happen is it's gonna take the original viral genome as a template to create this negative sense strand RNA. Now it uses this negative sense RNA as a template to create positive sense strands of RNA. So now we've done it. Now we've used the viral genome to create viral proteins and we've used the viral genome to create identical copies of the original viral genome. Now we have everything we need to create new variants, which can infect new cells. And these variants don't need to bring with it this RDRP. Cause again, once these vir viruses infect new cells, it's already in the form to get translated into viral proteins to create all the RDRP it needs to continue the life cycle. But now let's talk about another type of single-stranded positive sense RNA life cycle. So again, in a good example is this, HI this HIV virus. So this HIV virus infects certain types of cells. For example, it infects human T cells. So once it enters inside of the cell, the first step is to take this positive sense RNA viral genome and use it as a template to create this negative sense DNA strand. So that's interesting. This would require an RDDP. It's dependent on RNA in order to polymerize DNA. So these RNA dependent DNA polymerases are sometimes referred to as reverse transcriptases. But that's the first step. Now what we do is we essentially use this negative sense DNA strand as a template to add a positive sense DNA strand. And now notice what we have. We essentially have this HIV genome in the form of double-stranded DNA. And they essentially have the same information because again, in this single-stranded positive sense DNA strand, it has the same information as the single-stranded RNA strand. They essentially have the same codons. The only difference is this is DNA, so it has Ts, and this is RNA, so it has Us, but essentially they have the same codons, so they have the same information. So essentially the first step is this viral RNA genome is used to essentially create the, essentially the same genome information in the form of this double-stranded DNA viral, this, this virus genome. So the reason why that's so dangerous is now it's in the form of double-stranded DNA. So now it can essentially integrate into this human genome. Because again, this T cell has its own genome. So essentially because this HIV is in the form of double-stranded DNA, it can essentially integrate into our human genome. So now our hum this cell's human genome has this it, the information in this HIV genome. Because again, this HIV genome was turned into this double-stranded form, double-stranded DNA form, so now it can integrate. So now, essentially, this human cell has these HIV genes, which is really dangerous, because now we've this cell has eventually, essentially, turned into an HIV factory. Because now it has these HIV genes, which can again be translated into mRNA to create HIV proteins. It can also create, again, co identical copies of the original HIV genome. So now that, that this cell has turned into a factory to create these HIV proteins and to create identical copies of the original HIV genome, it can essentially form new HIV variants to bud out and infect new human cells. So the point, and something important to realize, 
are there are officially seven classes of viruses. So these are the official seven classes of viruses. And we talked about a lot of the different life cycles. And again, we also have a class and HIV is a good example of class six. And we also have this class seven with this gapped DNA viral genomes. And if you're curious, this is the life cycle, but these aren't quite as common. But the point is, it doesn't matter what type of class it is. It doesn't matter what type of viral genome it is. Once the viral genome enters inside of the cell, it has two major priorities. One, it wants to create viral proteins. And two, it wants to create identical copies of the original viral genome. So if the original viral genome was negative sense DNA single-stranded, then it wants to create identical copies of that original viral genome. It wants to create single-stranded negative sense DNA strands of the original viral genome. So now we've created viral proteins, and now we've created identical copies of the viral genome, so now we have everything we need in order to infect new cells.